Hello, my name is Tony Botting, and I'm a simulation specialist at Go Engineer. In this video, we'll show an example to simulate a pinned support on a shell element mesh. We'll use a shell mesh on this column to estimate the linear buckling load. The column is aluminum material, 98 inches long, with a 1 by 5 inch cross section. The left end has a pinned support with an axial compressive load, and the right end has a fixed support. You can see the left end simulates a pinned condition because it is allowed to rotate, while the right end is completely rigid. Let's define a new buckling study on this component. Notice the yellow block symbol. This symbol indicates the component will be meshed with solid elements. We change to Shell Mesh by right-clicking on the symbol and choosing Define Shell by Selected Faces. We'll choose the upper surface here and enter the 1 inch thickness value. The new symbol represents a shell group and underneath is our shell surface. Let's mesh the surface with defaults. And now you can see the mesh. For the restraints, we'll apply a fixed condition on the right end of the structure. Notice we need to select the upper edge because that's where the shell mesh is located. The fixed geometry item does this for us. Notice the symbols are arrows in each of the three axes directions, indicating the translation that will be fixed in that direction. There are also disks on the ends of each arrow. Each disk represents a rotation around that axis that will be fixed. Shell elements have nodal points that can rotate as well as translate, so we need to pay attention to these degrees of freedom. Now we'll go to the left end where we want to apply a pinned condition. We choose Advanced Fixtures so we can see the degree of freedom components for the edge of the shell. I'll scroll down to show the panel contents. I'll pick the edge for the restraint and the end face for a reference plane. Since the load will be axial or along the X direction, we want to allow translation in that direction, but prevent translation in the Z and Y directions. The Z and Y directions are in the reference plane. So I'll select the first two translation items and leave the normal to plane item alone. You can see the symbols along the edge are preventing translation in Z and Y directions, but not the axial or X direction. Now we'll do the rotation items. Selecting the first one will prevent rotation around the Y axis, but that's our pinned bearing, so we'll unselect that option. The next item prevents rotation around Z axis, so we'll keep that. The last one prevents rotation around the x-axis. This one keeps the column from twisting, so we can select that option if we want to prevent that type of deformation. So now we can proceed to install the load. I'll select the edges before and use the same reference plane. As we scroll down in the panel, you can see the six degree of freedom components revealed. I'll just put a unit compression load on the edge in the x direction. After running the buckling study, we can see the left end can pivot as a pinned end, and the right end is rigidly fixed. Also note the buckling factor is about 8814. The buckling factor is multiplied by the applied load to get the buckling load. Since the applied load is 1 pound, this indicates the linear buckling load for this structure is 8814 pounds. In this video, we showed an example to simulate a pinned support on a shell element mesh.